Hello everyone, uh, Snipe Trading here. Uh, so it's the end of March, so I'll be uh, going over my March recap uh, for today. So March, uh, it was a great, great month for me um, for part-time trading. So I I do have a nine to five job and I only trade the first two and a half hours of the market. Uh, we'll see, I do trade on my mobile sometimes uh, on the other, the other time uh, slots if I do see a trade that presents itself, but um, overall, up a total of seventeen hundred uh, for the month, uh, with just one losing day, which was a two hundred eighty one here on the uh, last Monday. Um, so let's get to it. So a little bit about my stats here. So uh, I have a total win of uh, nineteen hundred and a total loss of two hundred eighty one, which is just that one day with a max of three sixty. Uh, which was uh, last Wednesday um, and my average winner is about $153 um, my average losers 281 uh, the ratio between my win and loss is uh, 0.54 I wanted this to be up a uh, you know a more than a one uh, more than a two ratio uh, but um, this kind of uh, skewed my results a little bit uh, because it's just a one day um, so I did 13 trading, uh, 13 winning days uh, with a total of 14 days and so these, the, this week and a half here I was in vacation, uh, I was traveling um, so I did not trade during those time um, so it came out to be 14 trading days uh, this month uh, with a total of 93% winning uh, percentage for this month. So I want to go over uh, my last month. So the February here, this is my February recap. Uh, I listed things that I want to improve on. So I just copied over here to my uh, March monthly recap. And I, I just graded myself on how well I did. And anything with like a C, C or worse, I'll probably carry it on to uh, next month to try to reflect on how well I how well or poorly I did on the, that uh, metric. So let's get started. So uh, the first thing is not to over trade, uh, boredom trade during a slow market. So I felt like I did well on the not to over trade part. So I took mostly two to three tickers, um, but I think I did poorly on boredom trading. Um, so during the $281 loss here, uh, the overall market was down and I end up uh, boredom trading low quality setups so that was like taking setups that weren't even there I was just shorting stocks that were just up uh, it wasn't really a backside move and I end up paying paying for that and um, I should just learn to like you know yeah if there's no uh, A plus setup or anything that's uh, not my niche I shouldn't jump into it or uh, sometimes no trade is is the best trade. So uh, a zero PNL is better than a, a negative PNL. So I gave myself C for that because I kind of did balance out with the over trading. Um, the next part was not adding to losing position. So this one uh, I, I did kind of did the same mistakes here on the same day uh, when I was over trading. I, it was an A plus setup and I was uh, going in a larger size than I usually would um, because uh, I kept averaging up or down uh, to a losing position. So that is something I need to avoid to do. Um, that is uh, not how to trade um, and that is kind of more like revenge trading or just yeah, a flat boredom trading or yeah, totally I uh, kind of lost my mind when I did that. Um, not not a way to uh, trade um, so stopping out with the patterns against me so I did pretty well this month on this uh, metric um, and I think I did uh, really good because uh, there is a few instances where I stopped out when the patterns not working against me but it was like a fake out and it ended up going uh, it going it ended up going my way um, just a few moments later. So um, this could go against you, uh, but 
it is uh, what you need to uh, learn to take take those uh, stops when it just goes against you because when it when you don't do it that's when you really pay right so uh, it's good practice good habit to just you know stop out even though you're in hindsight you're like oh no if I didn't stop out it would have went my way perfectly but in hindsight, not always uh, it's going to be like that, and it's always good practice to not uh, think about that one trade, but think about it as long term and how you're going to develop yourself into a better trader. So I'm going to stick myself, uh, trying to stick myself into stopping out if it goes against me. Uh, so taking risks when the setup is there. So I think I did this well. Um, when I see a setup and I think it's going to go my plan um, strategy, I will end up starting small and then adding to uh, my position. And then if it breaks that, breaks that uh, break out or break down uh, my, uh, my bias, then I'll end up adding more. And I think I did pretty well there, um, taking the risk to do that. Because uh, last month I ended up seeing a lot of A plus setup that I end up not pulling the trigger and it end up like okay you're gonna have a FOMO here a FOMO there and then uh, eventually you'll FOMO on the next ticker and it's it, you'll have a bad time so I think I did uh, pretty well there uh, I took some risk you stop orders to enter high quality setup so this tied into the, this metric here um, because I was missing trades uh, with A plus setup, uh, I went in to use uh, stop orders uh, to enter trades, like a stop, stop buy order or stop sell order uh, when it hit a certain uh, price to put me into a position and, and trade. Um, and this will take out the emotional part of the trigger. So you might be emotionally uh, not able to tr trigger your uh, your strategy, but you add a stop order position that can uh, help you get into a trade uh, where you pur purposely wanted to. Uh, so I give myself an A because I didn't really use it, um, but maybe I should give myself an F, but I I'm not sure. Um, but I don't think there was any, I guess, setup that had like a, 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 a defined price. So that's why I didn't use it. I just gave myself an A. So taking profit when it goes your way. So here, I I think I did pretty well. Uh, I ended up taking profits. Um, there there was some cases where I did not take profits and I ended up losing or being red uh, or flat. So I, I think I did this uh, a lot, but there were times I also did this a lot. Um, but yeah, I gave myself a B, and that's one of the reasons here on my on the month of March on things I did well, taking profits along the way, um, and then uh, making sure to take profits along the way and not turn a winning trade into a losing trade or a flat trade. So that is uh, something you need to do. And uh, last week here, I I, I did uh, lost some uh, unrealized gains there. So not over trading. So not over trading. Stay in green. Walk away. Uh, I did pretty well uh, this month. Uh, you can see I when I stay green. Um, I try to stay my, you know, stay green not to turn you know over trade and then turn a uh, winning winning day into a losing day. So that that was pretty good. Uh, boredom trading. So uh, again, two eighty one loss. Uh, this day was. Uh, the market was down, uh, everything was pretty slow, and I jumped into uh, a low quality setup that wasn't there. I just shorting, shorting stocks that were just up, and there was no uh, uh, high uh, reward to risk ratio. So that's something I uh, need to uh, avoid doing. So being patient, waiting for setups. So uh, this was was pretty good. Uh, I waited. For uh, patiently for the backside of the move if I was shorting uh, for like an inverted cup and handle or um, something that can trigger and uh, go my way so I 
I think I did pretty well waiting that's for those setups stopping out I did pretty well um, that's the same uh, thing as the here um, and I followed that pretty well uh, when it's going against me I stopped out uh, if it's making higher highs or higher lows uh, then I stop out depending on what where my bias was since so scaling up to position so uh, last week here I you can see my PL was a little bigger uh, that's because I kind of give myself uh, a bigger position size so I scaled up about like 50% or so um, on my position size just so I can um, see myself grow into uh, a higher p and and uh, I think eventually as a trader you should always start small um, so I think as I explained before I I used to be only like a 50 through a $75 P&L uh, and now I'm into the hundreds, um, hundreds and 200, 300s. So eventually I'll, I always want to give myself like a 25% position side boost um, so I, I can see myself grow because I don't think you can grow by jumping from a uh, hundred, two hundred dollar to like something unrealistic like a thousand, two thousand. Because your emotion will jump as well because you're not uh, you're not able to manage that uh, type of big loss, right? So uh, you want to smooth it out and you know let your emotion grow into that as well, and not just like a big change of P and L because you just want to triple your uh, P and L. So. Um, yeah, so today, uh, this month, seventeen hundred. Uh, I'm really happy about that uh, for part time trading. Um, and as I said, if I'm able to make you know a thousand a day, um, eventually I will like to change it to a full time. Um, and yeah, so hopefully everyone uh, had some insight on this um, and been following my uh, trading journey. Um, I always like to reflect my uh, trades on the daily uh, daily base uh, on my daily recap but if something I, I am missing I can present it here in my monthly recap as well um, so um, this was a longer recap but um, it, those of you that are stick around towards the end uh, I really appreciate it and um, would like to thank everyone for that um, and as always, um, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy my content and like and comment if you want to see anything else. Um, all right. Uh, happy uh, next month trading in April, everyone. And all right. Goodbye.